a big hand of praise, everybody. Amen. Amen. For the blessings in the first session, lift up your two hands and let's give God thanks. That across board, please, for the word that came to us in the first segment of this meeting, give God thanks. And receive grace to align with the demands of this takeover army. Receive grace to align with the demands of this takeover army. Receive grace to align with the demands of this takeover army. Receive grace to align with the demands of this takeover army. You'll not be left behind. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Most of the time, we approach God as people who already know. And because God hates waste, He does not bother Himself to teach people who already know. But they make, we lay guide in judgment, and they make, we lay choose in the way that He shall go, the way He shall choose. Come and learn of me, but come with meekness. You come as you know, you stay at the same spot. All the depth, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, are unsearchable as ways, and it's past, past finding out. I've been in the school of faith since 1976. Under again. I'm still learning faith. I'm on a project now called Rocket Faith. I'm still learning faith. People feel they know. So they continue in ignorance. So much depth in God that only shallow men feel that they know. Let him think that he knows anything. He knows nothing yet as he ought to know. We are all in the race. We are all learning. We are learning. The precious name of Jesus. It's your turn. Yeah. It's your turn. Yeah. So I'd like you to come, at, uh, come around this morning as someone who needs to know what he does not know. Mark 10, 21, one thing thou lackest. Uh, you know so much, but you lack one thing. Does not allow things to work. Is that one thing we should look for? A car is not going to be because the engine is bad. One might not think I'll go wrong, and the car is tall. In the name of Jesus, whatever is tolling your advancement in God, uh, that one thing will be supplied this morning. Yeah. Lift up your two hands and ask the Lord, I'm here with meekness to receive from you that which I know not, teach thou me. 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 And where I am right now, by reason of the little I know, if I will know better, I will step higher. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Jesus, thank you for how far you have brought us, both as a church and as individuals. We are here for advancement. Lord Jesus, empower us again for further advancement in our work with you. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, and please, you may be comfortably seated. I'll be touching on a very, very important subject that's very crucial for this hour. It's becoming known, but we need to know more about it.
unveiling the mystery of empowerment through spiritual fatherhood. Unveiling the mystery of empowerment through spiritual fatherhood. It is natural for every son to share the DNA of the father. God is today restoring spiritual fatherhood to the body of Christ. Malachi chapter 4. And verse 6. And it shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. That's a restoration agenda for the end time. And the gruesome nature of the end time is painted in <laughs> Malachi chapter 1, I mean chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass in the last days that the earth shall burn like an oven. All the proud, and that they shall be stubble. That day that comes will burn them, even they will neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name. And then it went down there in verse 6. I will. I will Turn the heart of fathers to their children and they have to change their fathers so they can escape the Holocaust. It's an agenda. This implies generational anointing shall be coming upon the church in this end time. Psalm 145, verse 4. One generation shall serve you to another and declare thy mighty act. The spirit of just men made perfect shall begin to manifest supernaturally in their sons and daughters. We have this in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 to 24. He had come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to the company of innumerable angels, the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. The spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha, and he operated on the same wavelength. Mount Zion is a fellowship of not just brethren, but fellowship with angels, and fellowship with the spirit of just men made perfect. We saw John came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Luke 1, number 17. But what the fatherhood of Elijah? My father, my father. The children of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Now, Elijah is said to be the son of Shaphat. But he became a spiritual son of Elijah. He said, you have asked a hard thing because you are entitled to exactly what I have, but you are asking for now for double. At that point, he had access to whatever Elijah carried, but he said, I wanted double. 
have had a hard time. It's not hard for a son to share the DNA of a father. We only have inheritance in fathers, not in teachers, mentors, or even pastors. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Proverbs 13, 22. No one can share the DNA of a mentor but a father. Genesis 1, 24 to 25, everything produces after its kind. Only real children qualify to share their father's DNA. God is restoring spiritual fatherhood to the body which enables us to enter into their labors without reinventing the wheels. John 4, 38. I send you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored and ye are entered into their labors. Like I entered the labor of Agen. Other men labored and ye are entered into their labor. Other men labor and you have entered into their labor. That's one great platform of empowerment that is missing in the body of Christ today. Many are spiritual orphans. Struggling for survival day and night. Not knowing where their problem is. One sent to them as spiritual fathers are their colleagues. Or some even think they are their juniors. So they miss out of it completely. They keep struggling. Every true prophet desires to see the grace upon him made manifest in those connected with him. <laughs> Moses said, I wish all men were prophets. Numbers 11, 24 to 27, and 28 to 29. I wish all men are prophets. The problem has always been the insincerity of man. The word my father is mere accolade in the life of many because there is no reflection of that DNA because it's not genuine. They draw near me, God said, with their mouth, and with their mouth they honor me, but their heart is removed from me. Isaiah 29, verse 13. But the heart, the eyes of God running to and fro in all the earth to show himself strong in behalf of them whose hearts are perfect, genuine, sincere towards him. We understand from Acts chapter 3, verse 20 and 21, Jesus will not return until the restoration of all things we God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. And that includes this Malachi 4 seed. It is being fulfilled, but it will be in greater dimension as men become aware of this channel of empowerment that is so much neglected. Some people may stand as human worship. Bible says. Raw Bible says. Raw Bible says. A 
Egan is not only in heaven, Egan is also here. Amen. Spiritual fatherhood is real. The transference of virtue therein is real. We shall begin to see the spiritual DNA of fathers manifesting bodily in their true sons and daughters in dimensions that will be unmistakable. Unmistakable. What is spiritual fatherhood? It's about genuine spiritual connectivity with the one sent your way to father you spiritually. Genuine spiritual connectivity. For as in water, face answers to face, so the heart of man answers to another. No pipe bone water that is disconnected from the mains can experience the flow. The flow ceases when there's its connection. But when you are grafted into the vine, you become a partaker of the root and the fatness of the olive. Romans 11, verse 17. Now, let's examine the biblical proof of genuine fatherhood. A vital proof of fatherhood in the life of every true son is honor, 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 honor. Not the honor that comes from the tip of the tongue, but heart-rooted honor. Where genuine honor is lacking, fatherhood is fake. For a son honoreth his father, and a servant feareth his master. If I be your father, God say, where is my honor? Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. And if I, be, if I be your master, where's my fear? Heart-rooted honor is the fundamental proof of fatherhood. A genuine and sustainable honor For instance, I could not pick anything wrong in Egan and his ministry, his teachings, both while he was here and after he has gone to the great beyond, and that from 1976. Why? is held in high esteem in my heart. I still refer to him and recall to him and still study God's light through him. All oh, this, my father, my father, my, you better be true to yourself. I'm a reflection of the embodiment of what Egan stood for today. I saw a pressure-free adventure in his life. I crave for it. I saw his depth in the world. 
the word of life. I wanted it. I saw a serenity in ministry captivated me. What I said was this. Whatever made again, again, I wanted it. I said, well, I'm going on this trip. Whatever makes again, again, I want it. And I came back with the button in my hand. You are long overdue to have the button of this prophetic ministry. You are long overdue for it. You are long overdue for it. I met one of my sons yesterday. I was there to dedicate his new facility. He said, anytime I got to the point, I said, what will my father do at this point? What will my father do at this point? He never heard me say, I will ask myself, what will Lincoln do at this point? Fatherhood is fake where honor is lacking. You can't start talking down on one you claim is your father. Otherwise, you're a fake son. Therefore, each one should be true to himself. Because if you lie today, it will show tomorrow. My heart desire is to see every member of this church family reflect his or our source if he so desires. You have not because you ask not. You ask and couldn't get it because you ask and miss to spend on your own loss. Be true to yourself. No one can be a partaker of the grace he does not crave after. Unction, virtue, answers to a crave. Oh, everyone that tasted, come ye to the waters. Speaking about the empowerment of the spirit. Every form of empowerment requires a crave. It doesn't drop on people. It requires a crave. In Isaiah 41, verse 17, when the poor and the needy seek water and there is none, and their soul thirst, fail it for thirst. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God, will not forsake them. I will open up rivers in high places and fountains in the valleys. Talking about the Holy Spirit. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and seems upon the dry ground. Isaiah 44, verse 3 and 4. And I'll turn them to major attractions on the earth. Men shall call themselves, they will sonate themselves by the name of Israel. Verse 5. There is no access to empowerment through any channel without a desperation, a crave. Oh Lord, my God, only will I seek thee. My soul tasted for thee. And my flesh longer for the nature and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory. Elijah said to Elisha, get thee back from here. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. As, as I so leave it, I'm not going back. Okay, what do you want? There was a desperation in his heart to lay hold on what Elijah carried and he got it.
spiritual fatherhood is nothing new. You saw the king of Israel saying to Elisha, my father, my father, shall I smite them? Second Kings 6, 21. It's not new. And the virtue that flows from it is not new. Paul was speaking about the Philippian church, ye are all partakers of my grace. He said to the Corinthian church, for though you have 10,000 structures in Christ, yet you have not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. 1 Corinthians 4.15 But in this age of pride and arrogance, too many have made themselves spiritual offers and have suffered so much without knowing the resource of their diverse afflictions. You can choose to escape that this morning on a plot of gold. Spiritual orphanage is a it's, it's a challenge, particularly in these days of battles. Spiritual orphanage is a challenge. It's a challenge. It's costly to be a spiritual orphan in these horrible days. But true sonship naturally enjoys transference of spiritual virtues from their fathers. A thirst is a non-negotiable requirement to secure this. My prayer is that every single member of, this, member of this spiritual family will be a reflection of this commission Amen. in all areas of life. 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 Amen. Like I would say, it is the climber that needs the ladder. The ladder does not need the climber. The climber is a pressure on the ladder. The climber is a pressure on the ladder. Listen to me. The climber is of no benefit to the ladder. The ladder is absolutely of benefit to the climber. Again, it's gone to heaven, but watch what the ladder had done in my life. Watch the effect of what I didn't have to labor for, but was passed on to me. My son David, the baton has been passed over to you on a platter of gold. And the effect of that baton is all around us. Faith unfeigned. Not <laughs> manipulated faith. Raw Bible faith. Getting amazing things done without games. The spirit of faith with capacity to believe all things that are written both in the law and the prophets. Everything God says, find a resting place, a landing place in my life. And I know where that is coming from. The spirit of Agen doth rest upon David. 
And it's making things happen after the order of Agen, according to scriptures, which lives and abides forever. It lives and abides forever. The word of God lives and abides forever. So the spirit of faith is resident here by grace. But please note this. God is the sole empire. Empire, sorry. In transparency of virtue, and it's no respect of persons. When one is genuinely connected, the flow is auto because God cannot deny Himself. He said to Moses, I will come down and take all this upon you and place upon them, and they shall bear the body with you. They will come to your class and begin to do the things that you do in their various areas of engagement. And we come down. And God came down, Numbers 11, 24 and 25, and took up the spirit of, upon Moses and placed upon the people, and they prophesied and ceased not. That's God. So it's not a man that assigns a flow. Yes, the man is connected, and when God sees that, he commands the flow. Did I ever meet again when that happened? No, I didn't. I didn't. I was up in the gallery when the miracle took place. But my heart was set. Whatever makes again again I wanted. So it was so bad, I didn't know the name of the hotel where I stayed. I wasn't going there to buy nothing. I was going there to collect what this man carried. And God saw my heart. So when he was going to heaven, the Lord said to me, someone as close to you as your cloth, God knows who you are connected to. Come on now. I said, God knows who you are connected to. God knows whether your connectivity is genuine or fake, fabricated. He knows. He told me in my room here, someone as close to you as your cloth that you are wearing is coming over. And I said, could I be my biological father because he was old enough to go? He said, no, again. I said, God, he knew that I was connected to him as the cloth I wear. God knew. Don't fake this thing, no, it will show. So I'm as relaxed as again in doing what we are doing. As relaxed, no temperature. No tension, no fabrications, no games. Emoke tintina to rande to trapple. Stop faking these things. Water never flows uphill, it flows downhill. Water never flows same level, it flows downhill. It flows downhill. Without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. While Egan was alive, this tabernacle was dedicated. I'd be crazy to think that now that we build a tabernacle like this, and then the word is saying that's Elijah or something, I'm now his father. That would be madness. That's the arrogance of today's world. Arrogance. Have some titan cup in their hand, and then they don't have a spiritual father anymore. Got one funny appointment somewhere, they don't have a spiritual father anymore. Won one lottery somewhere, and that's it. You just run into trouble their life. Again, went to heaven 2003. We have been flying since 1996. So you better come down, come down, come down, come down. Come down. Come down. And live your life on what God has offered for you for free. Others have labored. You, if you have 
spiritual assets will enter into their labor and begin to replicate the things they carry. It's your turn. It's your turn. Can I say this? <laughs> These fathers don't take nothing from you. You take everything from them. So they don't need anything from you. You need everything from them. You can't give them anything. You are down here, they are up here. You can't flow into them. I have the privilege of a glimpse into the end time church. And I'm telling you, one of the vital things that we operate on. You see men and women, you say, the spirit of Jesus is upon him. You see men and women say, where is the Lord God of my father? And he shows up. That's where you're going. You have tried to fight and win and you are not winning. Connect with the winning grace, you find somewhere else. Thank you, Jesus. Here is a point of caution as we close. Every prophet is a sign to be spoken against. Luke 2, 34. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary's mother, Behold, the child is set for the fall and rising again of men in Israel, and for a sign that shall be spoken against. Talking about Jesus. Remember Moses said, a prophet shall the Lord your God send unto you like unto me. So he is the prophet of prophets sent by God for our rescue. But it shall be a sign that shall be spoken against. That is the devil's strategy in disconnecting people from the prophet sent to them. Now, listen to me. From time immemorial, God sends prophets the way of his people. Israel was languishing in Egypt, and God sent them a prophet for their rescue. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. Was he talked against? Plenty. Plenty. Did he deliver his mandate? Yes, he did. Every God sent prophet is ordained to be spoken against the purpose to disconnect the beneficiaries of that grace from assessing it. There were many, many widows in Israel until now was Elijah sent unto the widow of Zarephath. God sent prophets the way of his people. Proverbs, I mean, Luke chapter 4, verse 25, 26 to 27. There were many lepers in Israel. Unto no was Elijah sent, Elisha sent, but unto Naaman the Syrian. God still sends prophets the way of his people today. And every God sent prophet is sent as a father to whomsoever they are sent. I cited the example of my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the husband of the Arab. But we knew from the background that Elisha was the son of Shaphat. But when he saw the chariot, came down. My father, my father. He was his father, so he was entitled to the DNA of Elijah. And we saw him perform twice the number of miracles that Elijah performed because he demanded for it. He demanded for it. Uh, 
And the same thing with the king of Israel. My father, my father shall I smite him? Shall I, shall I smite them? Beware of a disconnect from your source of free help. Beware of a disconnect from your source of free help. Beware of a disconnect from your source of free help. The reason for this is to disconnect individuals from their God-ordained source of help. Refuse to be. Thank you, Jesus. But remember all the sons of the prophets mocking Elisha. They ended up bowing down their heads to the floor upon his return. A sonship or daughtership tie is what guarantees natural access, the spiritual DNA of one spiritual father. Just be genuine in your stand. Be true to yourself. It flows naturally. You don't struggle for it. It flows naturally. It flows naturally. The good news is, you are changing level. Amen. You are changing level. Amen. You are changing level. Amen. I want to believe that God brought you the way of this commission so as to enjoy the spiritual DNA that makes this commission. He brought you here to connect you so you can become a partaker of the root and the fatness of the unction upon this commission. Don't you ever toy with it. Don't you ever toy with it. Don't you ever toy with it. Jealously guard it in your heart. Guard it in your mind. Praying prophetically. Those who give honor never lack honor. You don't lack what to give. You only lack what to keep. Honor is not about money. Honor is of the heart. I never gave again a dime when the battle was passed over to me. All these buying, buying things. Yes, the son honors his father. That's okay. But to buy unction, forget it. It's your heart that connects with the heart of the carrier that engenders the flow. Money can never connect you to unction. Simon said, give me some of this power. Here is money. Say, your money, party with you. It's not money. It's about the heart. It's about the heart. It's about the heart. Please understand this. This teaching is not about, okay, somebody is looking for sonship. If you know the sons and daughters connected to this commission around the world, they are far above the membership of this church. Far above. I can tell you that. Far above. Far above. But you have so good enough. It's time to soar. It's time to soar. Now, no eaglet has a future without a mother eagle. It is a mother eagle that brings up the eaglet into the realm of soaring. No, he can't soar on his own into the sky, no. He carries the baby eaglet on her wings, gives her a view of the sky, first time, second time, third time, fourth time, and then some other time, he removes his back. Now, baby, try, try it out. When the ball crashing, comes pick it up again. It's moving from the class of the eaglet into an eagle. Any eagle that dares the sky without a mother eagle will crash and disappear before it sees the light of day. It's time to know God 
is a God of order. Spiritual fatherhood is being restored to the end time church. May you not be the last one to respond. Amen. May you not be the last one to respond. Amen. May you not be the last one to respond. Amen. Let me end with this humor. There's a man called Melchizedek in the scriptures. I'm coming to a natural explanation of it. He had no father or no mother. He lived for 936 or something. 936, I can't remember again. Years. There's only two verses written on him. He bought children and died. <laughs> Can I say this? He was in the nest all through his life. Couldn't come out. He bought children and died. Your future and my future is connected. Nobody trains himself to be where he is today. Somebody put something in. A, B, C, D, E. Now, one, two, three, four, five. Two plus two equals four. That's how you came up. Your learning process. Everybody needs a source on which he thrives and secures a future. I had plenty of that in my life, and I thank God for it. And I'm not ashamed to refer to them every day and every time. It's your turn. Amen. It's your turn. Amen. It's your turn. Amen. It's your turn. Amen. If this is so, why is it not so in my life? Help me, Jesus, to connect. I know a number of my sons and daughters in ministry that are owing nobody and are doing experts in business. Owing nobody and they are doing great things in business. Why? They tap into it. It's a DNA that they inherited. Not small, small businesses, big time businesses. Big time businesses. Big time, in billions. No debt. No debt. We belong to a no debt lineage. Ege old no man, Copeland old no man, Osborne old no man. We belong to a no debt lineage. Be connected. Like a dream of the night, you'll be free. You start living a life of dignity and honor. It's your turn. So don't tell me you can't be in business and not borrow. Where did Abraham borrow from? Did Abraham borrow from anywhere? You read your Bible? Is it a say no? It's a wait. It's not a say no, it's a wait. Between borrowing and being free from borrowing, what do you choose? How do you feel when someone you are owing, particularly when you are due to pay and you have not paid, comes around? You feel small. The borrower is servant to the lender. You feel small. You can't talk. You have been talking before you come, but when he comes around, you keep quiet. You keep quiet to make him forget <laughs> that you are owing him. You are walking free. Amen. Your ministry today is owing nobody, living or dead. Connect, sir. Connect. Connect. The greatest God is doing here without stress or strain. Connect. 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 And this becomes easy when you con connect with the flow of virtue. You connect with the DNA that makes it. It works out in you naturally. It's your turn. Yeah. It's your turn. Yeah. It's your turn. Yeah. Why this teaching? You are long overdue to reflect the virtues of this commission. You are long overdue to reflect in practical terms the virtues of this commission. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Amen. All over the world at this time, if you will do what I did in 86, you will have a pattern in your hand that will keep working the remaining days of the day. Jesus, what is making things work through this, my father? I want it. I want, I've tried to make it happen, but I know it's the virtue I need to connect with. Therefore, this morning, 
I release myself to connect with the DNA, the spiritual DNA that's making things work in this commission. Go ahead and pray. Definitely desire it. Don't pray like before, you won't get anything. Pray like you have never prayed before. Pray that from the depth of your heart. Jesus. I must return with what makes this work in this place. Lord, graduate me from servanthood to sonship in this house. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. No servant has an inheritance in his master. Only sons have inheritance in their fathers. It's time to graduate from servanthood to sonship. and become a carrier of the DNA of your source. It's time. It's time. God speaks to me today the same way he speaks to again. Specific terms. Specific terms. He corrects me to the same way he corrects him. Specific terms. Refuse to be an onlooker, become a partaker. Become a partaker. It's for your benefit. You are serving, that's okay. But it's time to reflect your source. In clean terms, it's time to reflect your source in clean terms. Now, look at an area that is not operating at the same frequency that you see in this commission. And begin to connect. Go ahead and pray. Begin to connect. Begin to connect. Do to yourself. Begin to connect. The financial pressure on your life is not part of here. The crisis in your home is not part of here. The crisis in your family is not part of here. Failure is not part of here. Defeat is not part of here. Begin to connect. Begin to connect. The pressure is not part of here. Begin to connect. Begin to connect. Barrenness is not part of here. Begin to connect. You have so many testimonies. Indebtedness is not part of this commission. Begin to connect. Anxiety and fear is not part of here. Begin to connect. You and God is let alone right now. Begin to connect.
Trusting a man is not part of this commission. Begin to connect. Connect right now. Your destiny is not in any man's hand. Spiritual dread is not part of this commission. Connect. 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 In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Now, wait a minute. You are going to pray. They took knowledge of Peter and John that they had been. It's time for the world around you to take knowledge of you that you belong to this commission. It's time for the world around you to take knowledge of you that you have been in this commission. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and knowing that they were ignorant and unlearned men, they took knowledge of them that they have been with Christ. Jesus, let my life be a reflection of this commission to the world around me. Go ahead and pray. Let my life be bodily a reflection to the world around me. Let my life be bodily a reflection to the world around me. Cry out. Cry out to God in all areas. In all areas. Let my life be a bodily reflection of this commission. Cry out to God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Please get seated for a moment. And I'd like you to put on the board, please, Numbers 11, 26 to 29. As we round up in this empowerment summit today. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of one was El Eldad. The name of the other was Medad. And the spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not out into the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moses, and said, Elidad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered, My Lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Emphasis thou for my sakes, for my sake, will God that all the lost people were prophets, and the Lord will put his spirit upon them. That's Moses' heart desire. And this morning I'm going to pray over you that every grace that works in me begins to work in the life of every true son and daughter. You know, I, I can pray for my DNA to be in your son. So DNA is there. That's why I'm saying that with caution. For every true son and daughter in this house, may the spiritual DNA at work in this commission, making things happen at the frequencies that we see, become your portion. 
He said, would to God that all these people are prophets. I pray that beginning from this empowerment summit, something turns loose in your life. Something turns loose in your life. Something turns loose in your life. Now, among the things we find here is nothing that God commands is treated with levity. There are those who are <laughs> WSM ministers who are not here. Not that they are anywhere else. They might be sleeping in their home. You don't treat God with levity and they don't treat you with dignity. Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. This is not religion, no. It's a kingdom of realities. We live and belong to a kingdom of realities. Don't walk out on God. You are too small. You are too small. You are too small. By grace, if you press my name on the system, one million can be behind that name. It's my own that will come out. You press my name on it to come out. What are you looking for? I've been jumping after God without any sense of shame, and I've never seen shame. No. No, I've seen shame. This meeting must mark the end of every trace of shame and reproach in your life. Now, can I say this to you, sir? Please drop your leadership of WSF. You can't attend this meeting. Drop it. And drop it now. Drop it now. Drop it now. He said, I know him. He will command his children to walk in his ways. Drop it now. What are they going to see there? You? How? I've lived with revival. Since this ministry began, please stop that. Stop it. Stop it. Take shape. Honor yourself and resign. Resign. Somebody else can do it. How dare you go to a place where you don't have any fuel in your, in your system? Can't, you can't do anything there. Sir, so I'm sent to bring you out of Egypt. And that by force. By the you must escape. You must escape the realm of arrogance and pride. And enjoy the beauty of the law. This thing is real, sir. Can I tell you what happened? In Nigeria, covenant landmark. How? When? How? When? Please listen to me. Things work here. There's a grace that's making them work. Connect with this grace. Don't pose. You don't get the post. Don't pose. I'm rich, I have nothing over nothing. No, you are blind. If you can see where God is taking you to, you know that you are blind. So you are free to come to worship, but you can't be a leader here without taking command. You cannot be a leader in this place without taking instructions. My advice, sir, therefore, is today. Just call your zona minister if he's still here and tell him, please excuse me. And he will gladly excuse you, sir. Gladly so. Exactly so. They don't want to contact me, they just accepted. And get someone there to replace you the same day. Your place will not be lost. Amen. Please take shape. We are soldiers of Christ. We are called to endure hardness as true soldiers. Leaders are soldiers in the company. This army, we are soldiers. I don't need it. Those who need it will show tomorrow that they got it. I needed it, I went for it, and I got it. And it's working wonders in my life day in, day out. There is nothing I thought that doesn't work. From today, there is nothing you touch that will not work. Not work for a while. Sir, this is 43 years running and it's still working. It's a law. 
It's a law. It's a law. A law is something that is predictable. You do it, you can tell the outcome. It's a law. Sir, First Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. Although I said, well, your father's house would stand before me to minister in all your generations. But now far be it from me. He that honors me, I will honor. He that despises me, I will lightly esteem. May you not be part of those who despise God. Stand to your feet. Yes, some may have jobs that will not allow them, but we can't stop his work because of your job. So resign. Somebody else will take the Resign. Amen. 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 Now, the place I labored 51 years ago as that temporary teacher, the place is still enjoying the honor of Jesus today. Only my birthday, people went there and supplied them sweet light. Hallelujah. Sit so in the storm that dies in the ground. His word is the incorruptible seed. There is nothing you do today that dies. Can I hear your amen? amen? It's waiting for you tomorrow. In the name of Jesus. Your labor in this vineyard shall not be wasted. Yeah. You will not only reap it, your children's children will reap it. Yeah. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delights greatly in his commandment, that delights himself greatly in his commandment. His seed also shall be blessed upon the earth. Now, the things you are doing in this kingdom, the kingdom of Christ today, your children's children will reap it. Yeah. No one in your lineage shall be a vagabond. Yeah. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Yeah. And his righteousness endure it forever. Yeah. For the upright, there arises light in darkness. Yeah. It's gracious and lended. It shall get his with discretion. My God, the wicked shall see it and gnash with their teeth. The desire of the wicked shall perish. The hand of the wicked shall not be seen in your life. Yeah. Can I hear you loud and say, man? Yeah. Please be humble enough to be corrected. Be meek enough to be corrected. Be humble enough to be corrected. Nobody's all right. We are still being corrected day and night. Allow Jesus to have his way in your life. You are not his Lord. He's the Lord of your life. Let his word be strong enough to put you right. And then you're on your way. Praise God. Praise God. I don't have one iota of fear or anxiety about tomorrow. I'm too sure the working power of God in his word is still working. Anything the word says stands forever. It worked yesterday, it's working today, it will still work tomorrow. Everyone that chooses to honor Jesus, they are still worship. Expect heavenly honor in return. Can I hear your loudest amen? If any one of us is challenged today in his or her health, I decree supernatural healing and deliverance. Yeah. If anyone's business is challenged, I decree supernatural breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Yeah. If anyone's career is challenged, I decree the way forward for everyone. Yeah. Now, I call for peace in every family. Yeah. And may everything that will make you a part of the takeover army, grace to align, receive it right now. In the name of Jesus, many will take cover under your shadow. You shall become the breadwinner of many. 
In the time of famine, you shall be satisfied. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This month, we are out celebrating the faithfulness of God as individuals and as a church. Commit yourself to it. Your personal praise will bring about your personal triumph. Don't toy with it. Let there be no moment of complaining about anything throughout this month. The power of thanksgiving will bring back to life whatever is dying or dead. In the name of Jesus. Jesus gave thanks as I was came forth. Anything dying or dead around anyone's life, among us, will bounce back to life. After four days, already stinking. People say it's forgotten. The matter is over. Jesus came in and he opened it. No matter is ever closed when God steps in. In the name of Jesus, he steps into the affairs of every one of us this time. In Jesus' name. I therefore decree that the balance of everyone's fortune package for 2024 be fully delivered. As you keep thanking God, you step out of every thing that appears a misfortune in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Now for all the churches worldwide, I decree divine visitation. Tomorrow's service shall be glorious. One of a kind. You have never seen it before. There shall be that prophetic entrance into your next level in that service. There shall be that prophetic entrance to your next level in that service. In the precious name of Jesus. So shall it be. No more breakdown. In your body, in your mind, in your spirit, in your emotions, no more breakdown. Anyone appointed to death in our company is set free today. Every appointment with death is cancelled forever. In Jesus' name, so shall it be. So shall it be. So shall it be. I decree fire on the altar of all WSF centers. And that beginning from today. I decree, I decree invasion of new members into those centers in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And blessed be your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift up those two hands and give God thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. And give him thanks. After sharing the goodness, all local assemblies are to wait for a moment for their own various announcements. The good news is your level has changed. Amen. Can you help me congratulate your neighbor to your right to your left? At least three people. Congratulations. Welcome to your new phase, your new realm of spiritual life. Welcome to your new realm of authority, your new realm of empowerment. Thank you, Jesus. To all workers worldwide, I say to you, congratulations. It's your new level. It's your new phase in the name of Jesus. Shall we together share the goodness of the Lord together in fellowship? Surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise God. Fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations one more time. Congratulations. Congratulations. You'll be hearing that the remaining part of the year. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the night. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise.